A little bit of an advanced lesson this one, but if you wanna learn compression, one of the most misunderstood topics in mix engineering, you gotta get your hands a little dirty and dig into the theory. Today we are talking about the difference between feed forward compressors and feedback compressors. Let's get to it. Hello everyone, welcome back to Mixpass TV. Before we start, please check the info box down below for my mixing courses on ProMix Academy, free plugin, special discounts and offers. And of course, if you really wanna learn how to mix and master professionally, click the join button down here, become a Mixpass TV member, access the already big and always growing library of full mixing courses on so many different genres, mastering courses, special videos and a lot more. And if the videos are helping you, please consider using the new feature, the super chats down here and support the channel. Let's get to the video. Let's jump right in. I'm gonna try to make this the least boring as possible. A visual reference will help you understand. So this is the block diagram of a feedback compressor. Feedback compression feeds the audio signal into the side chain just after the gain reduction element. This compressor type reacts to the signal amplitude without anticipating. Feed forward compression feeds the audio signal into the side chain before the gain reduction element. This compressor type anticipates the signal amplitude and adjusts the side chain chain signal in advance. An ideal compressor should not affect the audio whatsoever except for a defined amount of gain reduction when the signal in the side chain surpasses the threshold. In this scenario, feedback and feed forward compressor would act exactly the same below the threshold, but that's not the case. The circuit itself will cause inherent coloration of the signal. Even with no gain reduction, the signal taken before the side chain will be inherently, even if ever so slightly, from the one taken after the side chain circuit. It would seem that in the feedback design, it would be the already compressed signal that would cause the compression in the first place. And that's correct, as the program audio signal surpasses the threshold, it passes through the gain reduction circuit and the side chain in that order. The signal is also passed through the output. The side chain tells the gain reduction circuit to attenuate the signal, which is then fed back into the side chain and output. So the side chain is constantly adjusting the compression it itself is experiencing. And you're probably thinking this would cause a delay in how the compressor reacts, and that's true. However, electricity moves almost instantly and even feedback compressors can react very quickly. There will be a little lag compared to feed forward design. Feed forward designs, by contrast, feed the side chain with the same signal it feeds the compression circuit. In this case, the side chain reads, detect the audio program signal pre-compression and creates a control signal with the compressor's parameter that will ultimately compress the same audio program signal. Optical, FAT, and tube compression circuits are rather non-linear, so feed-forward designs typically do not serve them well. The feed-forward topology can act more instantaneously as it doesn't have to adjust to any signal that is already being compressed. Feed-forward circuits are favored to catch transients and hard limiting. Although feedback designs can be very fast, they will never react as instantaneously as the feed forward. So if you need to catch those transients or hard limited is needed, for example, for a parallel compression, maybe you want to reach for a feed forward compressor first. While feedback compressors are usually more suited for like vocals or bass or complex material like piano and stuff like that. With that said, don't take that as a hard and fast rule and don't be too caught up in this. Know the differences, but as long as a compressor is versatile, you can use it everywhere. So summarizing the differences for feedback compressor, feed forward compressor, side chain detector after the gain reduction circuit, side chain detector before the gain reduction circuit. Constantly evaluates and readjusts the compression versus relies on the proportionality of input and output characteristic of the level detector and gain reduction circuit. Less potential for over compression, more potential for over compression. Less precise control parameters, more precise control parameters. Typically have fewer controls, typically have more controls. These can be anything, VCA, PWM, FAT, Opto, Varimu, Diode Bridge. These are usually VCA and PWM. And if you want to know more about all the topologies and how to use them, what are the best one, I have a full dedicated series on this. I will post a link in the info box down below or here somewhere. One of the many examples for a feedback on compressor would be an 1176. And an example for a feed forward design could be the Elysia Ampressor. 
And a lot of people actually confuses the X presser with the M presser and they think it's kind of the same or one is the baby brother or the other. Actually, they are very different as the X presser is a feedback design and the M presser is a feed forward design. Another example for a feedback that is not a PET or a VCA could be a diode bridge compressor. And another one for the feed forward category is a classic is the DBX 160A. And nowadays we have compressors that can do both like the API 2500, which has both feed forward and feedback compressors. And I think this is it for this video. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment down below. I hope this video was useful and maybe now you are a little less confused if you were before as to what compressor to pick for a given task. If you like the video, please don't forget to leave a like and please consider the super thanks and support the channel is very important and appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Stay safe. See you next time. Hands on my